afternoon. Um, we are here for our Connect Point again, our devotion. This is the third one in this series. And we're, been, we're talking about a formula for happiness. And our background scripture is Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 15. What I want to talk to you about today is faith is a verb. Faith is a verb. Uh, Blaise Pascal, who was a French mathematician, scientist, philosopher, he was at work once in his laboratory very soon after the death of his beloved daughter when a scientist friend stopped by to see him and observing Pascal's faith and quiet trust in the face of tragedy, the friend said, Pascal, I wish I had your creed, then I would live your life. And Pascal said, uh, replied calmly, but very firmly, he said, live my life and you'll soon have my creed. <laughs> and the way to have more truth is to witness the truth you already know and then more will be given to you. If I have faith, it means that I have decided to do something and I'm willing to stake my life on it. When Columbus started on his first voyage into the West, he believed that the earth was round and small enough to be circumnavigated. He did not think about, you know, he didn't think that this was right in theory alone, but he staked his whole existence on it. I believe so I may act, that I may act. I act so that I might understand. This saying is relevant, not only to the first voyages around the world, but it's relevant in the whole realm and domain of science. And it's also relevant as far as, as the realm of faith. Faith is more like a verb than a noun. Faith accepts the word of God, affirms confidence in that word, and then acts on that word. You never really get going until you act upon what, you're, what you accept and affirm. Then you faith your way along. <laughs> Time magazine had a, a story about the U.S. has become such a nation of believers in the virtues of exercise. But there's a new study from the federal, federal government that reports that most citizens confine their practice to nothing more strenuous than pushing a shopping cart around a supermarket on a Saturday morning or shoveling down a pint of ice cream during between laps in the kitchen and the TV set, and many Americans appear to be suffering from the two syndrome when it comes to athletic activity. They claim they're too busy, they're too old, they're too sick, they're too tired, or that exercise is too boring. And Steve Friedman, who is the executive producer of NBC's Today Show, is unrepentantly indolent. He says, I'm one of those who believes that people in New York should rent motorcycles to ride to, to their cars, he proclaims. He says, I see the joggers out there in the rain and the snow, and they all look so unhappy. He said, if I had to do that to live to be 80, I'd rather die at 40. And when he said that, he was 39. But anyway, the evidence, says editor uh, T. George Harris of American Health Magazine, still shows that we're a bunch of fat slobs who do not have activity built into our daily lives. And I'm afraid the same thing could really be said about spirituality in the church. If we believe, we will act. Faith is central to all of life. For example, you go to a doctor whose name you cannot pronounce and whose degrees you, do not, you have never verified and he gives you a prescription that you cannot read and you take it to a pharmacist you have never seen before and he gives you a chemical compound that you do not understand and then you go home and you take the pill according to the instructions on the bottle and all of that you're trusting in sincere faith. That is sincere faith. The story of David's conquest is told in the Old Testament. And the Bible says that David was committed to a cause, 1 Samuel 17, 29. When he presented himself to fight the giant, Saul responded. He said, thou art but a youth. But David had experienced danger before and replied. He said, I know some things. He said, the Lord hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. And he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. God did the impossible. Each victory prepared David for an even greater victory. And God's people have faced giants in the name of the Lord ever since and have been victorious. We need to believe God no matter what our senses tell us, no matter what. We need to believe God. Sometimes God makes us wait on an answer. But that doesn't mean he's not doing anything. We need to have faith along the way. I love this story. One after, a very hot afternoon, there was a certain woman who walked to a neighborhood produce stand to buy grapes. 
and the line was long and each person seemed to get special attention, but she waited patiently. And when she finally made it to the front of the line, the owner asked her for her order and she said, I want some grapes. And he said, please excuse me for a minute. And, and the owner walked away and he disappeared behind a building. And for some reason, this really hit her wrong. It rubbed her the wrong way. Everyone in line had been greeted warmly and they were given special attention. And most importantly, they were served immediately. But she was forced to wait. And when she got to the front of the line, she was forced to wait some more. She was offended. She felt like the owner was, you know, was taking her regular business for granted. Now, the longer she waited, the angrier she became. And finally, the produce stand owner reappeared. And he had a big smile and he presented her with the most beautiful grapes she had ever seen. And he said, I want you to taste one of these grapes. And she had never tasted grapes so good. And as, he, as she turned to leave with her delicious grapes, he stopped her and he said, oh, he said, I'm sorry for keeping you waiting, he said, but I needed the time to get you the very best. How long have you been in line waiting for God to get to your request? How long have you been waiting in line for God to meet a need or solve a problem or open a door? Whatever you do, don't get out of line and don't stop praying and don't get offended. Wait on God. Keep believing no matter what. God hasn't forgotten you. God's not ignoring you. He's preparing something that is his very best. Just give him time and God will come through. God bless you. Hope this is a blessing.